Hi, and welcome to yet another installment of the Sagebrush Happy Hour Journal uh, for October 3rd, uh, 2024. Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, sunspots. So, uh, I'm quite an astronomy fan and fanboy, I guess you would say. And this morning, I got a notification that there was a uh, X-class solar flare. And so what that means is that the highest class of a solar flare is the X-class. And this one is actually the highest uh, uh, magnitude solar flare in this current solar cycle. And it was at a level of X9.1, which is pretty darn powerful. And uh, here I'll show you a picture here. This is from NASA. Um, and that shows that solar flare. And so uh, I went out today and I took out my uh, favorite toy, which is my little Seastar S50 smart telescope it's seen here. And then I went and uh, put on a solar filter on its lens and uh, took some pictures of the sun today. And so here's a nice picture of the sun showing all the sunspots that are on there right now. And so this is a really active period in our sunspot activity. Um, this is what they call solar cycle number 25. And that basically we have a 11 year cycle in where the sun has more or less sunspots. And so we're on the kind of the up ramp of uh, cycle number 25. And we're getting more and more sunspots and more and more solar activity. And also these solar flares, they cause what is called CMEs or coronal mass ejections. And so that's when when there's a solar flare, it sends radiation, which is travels at the speed of light. So from the solar flare today, uh, that this morning, it hit our atmosphere, you know, just a few minutes later after the actual solar flare, uh, the radiation did. And that actually caused uh, some radio uh, outages over the Pacific. It basically ionizes the atmosphere and blocks low frequency radio transmissions. And so, and that radiation is also what can cause uh, some other effects um, that, uh, you know, may, might affect the electrical grid and something like that. But then, um, in addition to that, there's the coronal mass ejection, which sends out matter, which travels quite a bit slower than the speed of light. And so we'll be getting that matter from the uh, um, coronal mass ejection and from that solar flare here in the next couple of days, uh, anywhere between uh, uh, two and four days from now. And so that, when that hits our uh, atmosphere or hits our, our magnetic field, that is what causes the aurora borealis and all the atmospheric effects that we, we see from uh, the sun. So that's our little science lesson for today and my journal entry and cheers.